All right. We are now live. We are live. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. Now we have this camera and live, and then we have the audio recording. The audio. Yeah. Yeah. So we finally, have an official setup. In a few minutes here, we're gonna get a call from Mark Valunga, the guitarist from Nothing More. Okay. Right. okay. We're gonna talk to him for a little bit. Bye. Now. Sponsor break. Sponsor break. Sponsor break. What? Our sponsor today <laughs> is Studio Fua Fua. They are a marketing slash, uh, just, they do a whole bunch of things. Uh, they're main, uh, they're mainly known for marketing and, um, and, like, setting up websites. But they are actually, like, the nicest, like, ever. They are, they're so nice because they, uh, because I put a $200 deposit on a camera and I am now able to use, it wasn't $200, it was way more. <laughs> the entire setup was 2000 okay? We are, and we have like a lease on it and we are using it f to record this video right now. So thank you, Fua Fua Fua. Um, anyways, and a sponsor break. Yep, so. All right. Just waiting to get started. No one's watching live right now, which that doesn't matter because it's just us right now. I'm gonna get my phone real quick. I'm gonna shout out. But I'm gonna shout out you guys. I'm gonna shout out us. In a couple minutes, we will. Um, like I said, be talking to Mark Valunga from Nothing More. We have some professional stuff right here. Yes, very professional. All right. This is an interview that's actually really cool because, like, nothing more is a really amazing band, really unique. Yeah. And I got to see them live when they opened for Ghost, and their live shows are absolutely amazing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to Instagram and shout this out. So that people know, Shout so that people know that we are live streaming. All right. In about one minute, so twelve p.m. Okay. Pacific time. I'll make a post. Just the awkward silence part. <laughs> okay, make the post. Hey everybody, uh, we are here with Gage Sensrude, and we are now we are now going live. Um, Music Corner World is uh, is going live. We are interviewing. Um, yeah, go see him. Okay. My phone does that too. Hey everybody, we are going live with Gage Sensrud on Music on the World Official. Um, please go, uh, please go check us out. Uh, we are doing an amazing interview with Mark Vallelungen. Okay, anyways, so from nothing more. Uh, go check it out. Bye. Yep. There we go. Okay. Oh. Boom. It's Twelve. So any second now. Okay. Make sure the volume's up. Time went by really fast. Like, yeah. Like, I'll share feet. Share. I don't even remember when I contacted them. It was like this okay. month. Okay. Yeah. We need to. We need to go. We need to like make sure that everybody knows. Um, We're live. I, I want to text. Yep. Me. I want to text <laughs> a few of my friends. Any 
the second half. Nothing more. Hello? Hi, this is Mark. Is this uh, Gage? Yep. Awesome. All Very right. Cool. How y'all doing? Good. Oh, we're doing, How are you? We're doing pretty good. Awesome. Good. I think I just called your dad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not certain, though. Um, there's a 541 number as well. Yeah, I... I, it was a little confusing at first, but you got the right number. Okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No worries. Tell him hello for me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right now you're you are live on uh, Instagram. Instagram, and then you are also um, you are also on Musical Underworld. So yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Live via the interwebs for the worlds. Yep. Awesome. This is how y'all. Yeah, y'all okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how's quarantine been? Uh, it's been something. <laughs> it's, been, it's been pretty, pretty hard for a number of reasons. Um, you guys are kids, so uh, I imagine it's been weird for you too. Um, I, I have a seven-year-old son, so. Yeah. Figuring all the distance learning stuff out has been oh, just lovely. <laughs> um, right. But, you know, everybody's trying to figure it out and doing, you know, the, the best job they can. So in some ways, I think it's great regarding education in the school and independent study for kids. In other ways, you know, yeah, it's a bummer. My son's seven. He wants to hang out with friends and do all that. And, uh, you know, he's not. And I find it ironic that, you know, there, there's this screen time app. Make sure, you know, you don't watch too much, uh, you know, electronic screens. And now it's just, oh, let's just watch screens all day long, yeah, <laughs> all basically. the time. There's no choice around it. I'm not saying it's bad. I just think it's funny. All right. Um, yeah. But, yeah, in, in regards to my, my job and, uh, and everything, it's – it's been all right. It's been interesting. It's forced us to, uh, every one of us, get our home studio situation up and running and just file share and, you know, comment through that. We do get together, just not quite as often. Um, Johnny, our singer, lives in um, Baton Rouge. Uh, Dan, uh, ben, our drummer, lives in Phoenix. And Dan and myself both live here in San Antonio. So, yeah, it's been been a bummer um, and feels disconnected in some regard. Just, you know, the, only the magic that happens when you're all in the same room. Of you, you make these decisions and you follow this, this inspiration from an idea. And then, you know, it's, let's say, two or three of you are in one room together and you do the same thing and then you send the idea well, sometimes the magic is missing, you know what I mean? And there, there isn't that same, like, ah, we all felt it in the room and we felt what it could be, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's just a different way of doing things. I think at the end of the day, I mean, if whatever the, the product and results of each song will be awesome and we won't settle until, until each one is awesome. But it's, for me personally, it's been kind of a frustrating process yeah i feel like we yeah. feel the same because uh yeah so me and gage and uh uh and two other people um we're in a band and we've been um we we've been like working on two albums so far and we've and like we've had to do the exact same thing we had to work on home studio uh, um things it's, it's file sharing and this, and we, um, we've been trying to get like each and every, uh, each and every one of the members, like, together to like actually record. So yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I hear you. It's just it's changed the game for uh, everyone, really, in, in regards to just making music, um, which is again cool in some ways and and good that we all know that we can do this and um, we can be just as efficient from home as uh, opposed to being in a, a jam room or studio or whatever together. Um, but shoot, yeah, tell, tell me about you guys. You guys, are, you guys are in a band? How long have you been in a band? Uh, yeah, um, we've been, we started the band in like 2019, so last year, but the lineup has changed a lot. I was originally the singer and the guitarist, and then hmm. a bunch of lineup changes came, and now I'm the drummer. And then so. we lost a bassist, and then we got a bassist, and then we um, also lost a guitarist. And then we got a guitarist. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's okay. It happens, especially yeah. at first. I'm, I'm here to yeah. tell you, uh, I was our first singer, <laughs> oh, and okay. uh, that didn't pan out too well. I think I went away on a summer camp or something, and Johnny and our other guitar player at the time sent me an email saying, "Hey, maybe you should focus on guitar." <laughs> yeah. So. Really? So, so I did, you know, I still love vocals and sing harmony and we all work together on the lyrics and melody. But, um, my point is, yeah, band member changes happen all the time. Obviously Johnny was our drummer and after five different singers, um, you know, we decided to, you know, Hey Johnny, you got, you got the best voice. Um, and he kind of wanted to take a stab at it. So it's like, okay, well let's just find a different drummer then. Um, and then, and then we did, and that was 12, 13 years ago, I think, yeah. And so he's been singing for about 13 like, years back as far like as the prop man position. Was, was it like back in 2006? Uh, the end of 2007. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so, I was wondering what your opinion on live stream concerts are. Like, um, are you excited to get back to playing for a live audience? And do you, do you enjoy playing live stream concerts with nothing more? Um, you know, honestly, we haven't done one. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I've, and I, I actually haven't even watched one either. Yeah. Like, I, I've seen stuff before, you know. Um, when you know instagram live and facebook live and all that and we've done that in the past too um and it's i mean there's the obvious there, there isn't the energy of the crowd there you, you do kind of feel like you're taking the test and there's all that anxiety and, and nerves there not like everybody's here to have a good time and they're all with you instead you're under a microscope and you know it's like people are judging you and then sometimes the audio from you know whoever's mixing it and sending it out is just crappy and so it sounds worse than you know if you were actually there um i don't, don't want to be a negative nancy <laughs> or anything about it though it, it is still really cool that everybody uh can see you know even if they aren't there it's still a, a great piece of technology that will only continue to get better and better. Um, I think it is something that we will probably do, um, you know, in the next year or two. Generally, we, we try to not necessarily stay away, but we really want to control, you know, the video and the audio type of thing. We like to put on a, a big show and everything and, and if people don't see that it's you know i don't know if we want to deliver basically and if, if we can't really deliver we just think oh, i don't know maybe we should wait until we can all right if that makes sense i think yeah. it's good that people are finding ways to like play together during quarantine yeah yeah absolutely i did uh just a quick just cover of uh the song judith by a perfect circle oh, with uh yeah. yeah yeah with my buddy doc from uh god forbid um and bad wolves and uh metal cohen 
she's a YouTube drummer, um, great drummer, um, does a lot of cool covers, and uh, this guy Sterling on vocals, kicked ass, he was really, really strong, and then Aaron Bruges from Breaking Benjamin. So, so that was a cool file sharing collaboration, you know, something that probably wouldn't have happened at all, even though it could have, um, if quarantine wasn't here. You know, Doc just hit me up and uh, told me about it, and it was like, yeah, I love that song. Let me uh, let me sit with it. We'll kind of, I'm gonna put my spin on it, do a uh, you know, a slightly different rendition, but not entirely. Um, still give the original justice, and. Yeah, Octane picked it up and started playing it, um, as well as uh, some other avenues and whatnot. So that was that was fun to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Judas by Perfect Circle has to be like one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. It was, it was written about yeah. uh, um, uh, Manor's, yeah, Manor's mom. Yeah, mm, yeah who, who died. Uh, Judas, Mary Keenan. Well, Judith was about, like, when she was paralyzed. Yeah. 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 Nonetheless, it's like, even though I may not prescribe to or agree with, you know, some of those feelings, it's like, I can totally see. Man, I'd feel the exact same way. Yeah. If my mom got paralyzed and she still clung to her faith um, through all that, when it's like, as an outsider... You're kind of seeing, well, why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah. You know, clearly this faith thing that you have, it doesn't really look like it's panning out, you know. But uh, that's that's a long discussion, <laughs> and then we don't have to get into it. It's, uh, I don't know, truth is truth, even yeah. if it's upside down, and even if it looks different to you, it doesn't mean it's not truth for somebody else and that's that's where i'm at right now in life yeah someone in the instagram live chat wants to know what the process was like for writing the song go to war oh right on uh it was uh super quick which is super rare <laughs> yeah. for us uh normally you know gosh that takes years and because we can never agree on anything we're not tool but i think we share a lot of the same uh aspects of them (laughs) when it comes to writing um but right for go to war um honestly i just i kind of had this real folky guitar part that you kind of hear now um you know put through an electric guitar and had some distortion still single coil like though so it's kind of twangy um and uh, I've been listening to a lot of Fink. Um, he's a great acoustic singer-songwriter guy. Um, I definitely recommend checking him out. He's got some great stuff. Um, and kind of just wrote that little little number. And then we went in to collaborate with this producer uh, out in L.A. on one of the trips we went to. And Johnny just got off a phone call with uh, his now ex-wife. And, you know, they were in the, in the heat of it. And he was like, Mark, start playing that thing. Um, and so I started playing it. And uh, I don't know, just just the the, the whole war thing, just kind of like it just jumped out at him. And so he went from there. And like anything else, it's like, uh, well, you follow the idea. And so we kept following it and it turned into this, you know, screaming at the ones you love. And it was like, okay, everybody goes through – uh, arguments and whatnot with their spouse or their significant other and how, how are we going to put a twist on this and for me it was uh, and even in my marriage um, there's you know there's times to where it's like you're okay to go to war if you will because you know at the end of the day you're you're it's you're still going to be here like, like it's on the grounds that we feel safe basically it's like I can you know, I'm, I'm allowed to get upset or get angry and she's allowed to do these things and whatnot because we're comfortable and we trust each other enough that it's like, man, if we got to go through this hard stuff, um, then that that's OK. We have to to get over the mountain or get to the other side type of thing. And so that was 
that was the twist to me that's like okay now i see the lyrical uh vision of the song and um but yeah yeah really honestly in like 30 minutes to an hour it's like the skeleton of the song as far as the chord progression the melody the main lyrical theme um was all there um sure we take our time our sweet ass time (laughs) getting the right tones and making sure this drum fill is the one that needs to be there or this guitar tone and that bass tone etc but that's it's all fun you know make sure yeah the song sells itself and yeah honestly we we try to put like every song through this um chills uh barometer and what i mean is like you know when you're listening to a great song Mm -hmm. and uh you know it it gives you goosebumps gives you goosies and it makes makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck and whether it be good bad creepy or just joy um that's it's a super powerful feeling and i know it's like from the songs that i love like i want to be able to do that and that's what i've always wanted to do with my life and, and the music i create that we create um so we can really have zero filler on an album that's the end goal all right um another person in our chat wants to know uh is jazz part of your inspiration uh that's a good question uh no (laughs) not entirely i haven't studied jazz i studied uh classical guitar at uh, UTSA here in San Antonio for a couple Mm -hmm. years and just completely fell in love with music theory. I did some in high school and I've taught guitar for 20 years now. Um, And I can appreciate uh, a lot of jazz regarding all the extensions and um, the whole lackadaisical laissez-faire view of it in regards to eh, anything works you know (laughs) do whatever you want there is no scale because sometimes the wrong notes are right notes and that can be really cool so and i I definitely follow that mentality in regards to writing our music um and into really borrowing i think that's a, a theme uh that that we all and nothing more try to do try to you know just listen to all good music and be sponges about the good things absorb like why was that really cool what did he do that made that feel awesome or it's why is that chord progression so moving and kind of study that and understand it and then yeah, put our own spin on it and put it in our music or dress it up our way and kind of see what happens. Sometimes it's awesome, sometimes it's terrible. <laughs> but you never know until you try. All right. Yeah. Um, so, um, speaking of inspirations. Inspirations? Uh, speaking of inspirations, um, what are some of the main inspirations that you use for your guitar playing? Because I noticed that your guitar playing is like really unique and you play in drop C for most of the songs and like it just sounds really cool I like the guitar sound so what are some inspirations for that that's awesome well thank you for those kind words man um yeah uh it it, the big ones when I first started playing I I think I was a typical metalhead my older brother loved metallica and i I followed in his footsteps and really like i think when you first get your hands on an electric guitar and you turn on that distortion it's like yes and uh like enter sandman of course was one of the first songs i learned and i learned you know some blink 182 stuff i love palm muting that was fun um then I'm not ashamed. I, dude, I fell in love with Creed, like, big time. I'm a huge Mark Tremonti fan, um, and I, I love what he's doing with his solo stuff now and with Alter Bridge, too. It's really cool. He's a really nice guy. I fell in love with Seven Dust. And then something that branched me off a little bit was Incubus. And, you know, you mentioned, or somebody mentioned jazz, and I know Mike is 
uh, super jazz oriented um, in his chords and a lot of his tone. Um, and I loved how he stood out in, in the rock world from all the other guitar players um, and his tone, his effects, um, and just kind of how he thought about music. And, you know, I, I bought those tab books and learned all the songs, loved them, um, still love them now. Um, from the from the earlier stuff, and that brought me to um, studying classical guitar, like I was talking about, and I fell in love with a lot of those composers. Uh, Leo Brower and Carcassi um, were two really really cool ones. I like Brower a lot because he thought more in the 20th century um, vein of of music. When I say that, that's like you know, if you listen, if you watch old Tom and Jerry, and you kind of hear the more sound effects, like do 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 do, it sounds terrible. Me just doing it with my voice, but uh, a lot of that, like uh, Leo Brower brought to guitar and kind of how to play it and utilizing dissonance, and I, I really enjoyed his unique perspective on a lot of that. Um, and kind of actually, you can kind of see a lot of that in metalcore, um, as far as the dissonance and the, the stress and the tension that, that happens in a lot of that music and how it, it's sort of become a thing. Um, and like tracing it back to its roots is interesting. I think it comes from a lot of right 20th century uh, classical music. But then I I went to this one concert. Sorry, I'm long-winded. I apologize. That's fine. Uh, fine. Yeah. This is <laughs> People great. are getting bored or whatever. Um, we got some good answers. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. I went to this uh, Coheed concert, and the uh, Coheed and Under Oath, and they're both great. Um, but the band that stuck out to me was this band, Three. And uh, it's... Uh, the drummer of Coheed's brother is uh, Joey Eppard, and he fronts their band, and he, he plays an ovation uh, acoustic guitar. And he was just in the middle of their set. He just started like this awesome acoustic slap solo, like nothing I'd ever heard before. You know, I'd seen Flea slap on bass and and all of that, and it's cool. And that was like more funk oriented, but this guy was it was like this fusion of funk and classical. Um, all in one, and it was just him, you know, in front of you know three, four thousand people, just doing this this solo, and all eyes were on him. It was just that good and that unique, and I fell in love with his playing and uh, have studied, kind of taken a few tricks from him, and definitely recommend anybody go check him out, Joey Eppard. Um, he's got like a flamenco style as well, which is really neat. Um, and, and different. Um, but uh, honestly, like, uh, I, gosh, uh, there, there's so many uh, awesome guitar players out there and that I, I definitely take notes from and pay homage to. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, what, what about you? Tell me some of uh, your favorite guitar players. Uh, um, you want to go first, Ish? Um, I, um, I listened to a lot of, I just started listening to a lot more Queens of the Stone Age. So, yeah, Joshua Homme is a good guitarist. And he is. Omar Rodriguez Lopez from the Mars Volta. Oh, yeah. He, is he's amazing. It, 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 yeah, his, his, uh, his guitar playing is, like, insane, like, and he has a whole bunch of diversity, and also he's, like, a really unique guitarist. Yeah, like he comes up with riffs that no one else really would do. Yeah, no yeah, else. you're you're absolutely right. Um, it's it's kind of weird in this like sort of sloppy Steve Vai way. And I yeah. mean sloppy in a in a good way. Yeah. yeah, there's like there's a lot of feel to his playing, and it's like it is almost like jazz or whatever. It's like those notes yeah. are wrong, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But. I, I, I feel like we don't have to really mention Jimi Hendrix because, like, I, like, yeah, everybody knows. Everybody. He's a great. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, he's, um, but one of the unique, it, it, uh, 
Sorry, uh, the camera just turned off. Um, but, uh, but, uh, That's fine. Uh, uh, We're still recording. One of the unique, most unique guitarists that we, that we've really um, like. That I'd say, it was. Um, I'm thinking. Probably like. I don't know. Actually. <laughs> yeah. There, there are lots of guitarists. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, for sure. So so many. I mean, and I can't, you know, reiterate that I have them all to thank. You know, there are bits and pieces from everybody that you can pull. I have this awesome old uh, dime bag wah chilling in this case that I'm, I'm staring at right now um, that I got from one of his old guitar techs. And I never got to see him play. Um, but I got, you know, watch plenty of videos and everything. And yeah, that guy was a savior. Um, and then he was, I think the definition of a metal league guitarist and if not the best one by far, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so many, so, so many of them. Um, but yeah, how, how long you guys been doing, uh, music underworld? Um, I'm pretty sure two months now. Yeah, two months. We started okay. like in the beginning of quarantine because uh, uh, because we were bored and, yeah. and we wanted something to do, and then after that uh, it became something that we that we like actually put like time and effort into, like after uh, like uh, once we started uh, like actually like being it once we like got the the um the yes on the interview from Paige Hamilton, um we uh, uh we started like like putting actual like time and effort into our like into making this possible and we we like started making it actual real and we were trying to get get, like a lot of like like promoting uh and then sponsors and then we've like been trying to get a hold of uh, of a lot of people and thank you for um but for actually uh, like like coming on here because it, it like it actually means a lot to us yeah yeah it's... Of, co- of course no, i'm happy to it's it's cool to see um you know y- y'all doing something and you know despite your age or whatever and, yeah. and that you care about and that honestly made me want to yeah i want to jump on and and talk to y'all all right yeah. um I know our old guitar player um, who left the band in uh, 2008. Um, he had he had a magazine as well when we were, you know, 12 to 13, 14, and that's how <laughs> basically he would get free tickets to you know concerts, rock concerts yeah. coming to town. He'd set up an interview and um, he'd go out and you know get to talk to his favorite guitar players or singers or whomever. So it's it's totally, totally possible, and, and why not learn and, and talk to, you know, the people in your field or in, in, a, in the field that you want to be in regards to learning from, seeking to understand, you know? Yeah. actually figured out uh, or found out about nothing more since when I won tickets to go see Ghost on their, oh. on their most recent tour. Because, like, usually... When we go see bands live, we do research on the bands that are opening for them. And so mm-hmm. I I was listening to the stories we tell ourselves, and it was actually really good, so I decided to start listening to you guys a lot more, and your live shows, and all the music that you made is, like, really awesome. Yeah. It, it means a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate you taking the time and, and doing the research. Yeah. That was a fun tour. Yeah. Yeah. The, those guys are, those guys are cool. Super theatrical. And, um, it's, it, it was a cool show. I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what, uh, like being in a band and kind of, you know, for a couple of years now or, or whatever it is, like, uh, yeah. I don't know what's what's next for y'all. What, uh, uh, probably yeah. getting signed to a record label. 
like after <laughs> like once our album is done and we have like a, a a like our like the best song that we've that we've made through those albums and we go ahead and like give it to a record label and and, and say hey how is this and yeah 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 I, I i totally hear you and that's that's uh not saying that that's what everybody thinks it goes or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah. but i will yeah. say definitely do as much as you can on your own at first mm -hmm. you know i mean yeah. that's definitely the way we've thought about things as far as like man we just we need to get a and r reps to hear our music and uh, yeah. if only they like it and, and they just sign us, you know, being 13 and being 14 and, and doing that, sending those songs out and always getting replies of like, oh, it's cool, you know, but uh, we, we don't have any room right now or we don't know yeah. what to do with yeah. this. And we kind of heard that answer for, geez, like basically 15 years. Um, yeah. yeah, a long time. And, but that didn't stop, you know, it, it didn't stop us from continuing our, our dream or pursuing our passion. So really, I, I would just say like, yeah, get as good yeah. at what you do on your own as you can, you know, build your vision, ask yourself, what is your vision? What is yeah. your band? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Yeah. If, if you're, you know, your buddies good at scheduling and, and thinking of all that, well, it's okay. Like maybe, you know, he, he can be your, your DIY booking agent or whatever. Shows are weird now, obviously. So yeah. the, the game has to be uh, rewritten for now um, into what opportunities that you can get. But yeah, just, I guess like, you know, don't stop and keep getting better <laughs> Uh, what you do that's an obvious answer um but uh, yeah I, well I would, i'd recommend uh don't get bummed out if people tell you that song sucks or yeah, <laughs> or you know you you need to work on this just use it as fuel and go back and try to be open to any and all criticism and yeah. have it be constructive you know yeah, I was just planning on like, you know, writing stuff, practicing on our own. Yeah. And then just like putting it all together on the album scene where that gets us. Yeah. There. So, another thing I was wondering is uh, since the, the Basinator solo is a popular part of your live shows, how'd you guys come up with the idea for that? Yeah. Uh, delirium and uh, <laughs> uh, working a stupid UPS job, putting uh, loading cargo onto jets. Uh, Dan and I had this job where we did that, you know, in the wee hours of the morning in the graveyard shift um, for several months. We ended up doing that, and I had basically convinced him to join the band. Johnny had known him for several years. They played in the church band. Uh, together. And Dan was a, a little bit older and he, he had heard our band and he just, uh, he wasn't ever really interested. You know, we had other bass players and whatnot before, but I had always really loved Dan's playing. And it, it, there's a difference between a bass player and a guitar player that just plays bass. It's just how you think of the instrument and what its purpose is. And Dan is 100% a bass player. And, um, so it took us, uh, him living with me, um, when we were going into college, um, and kind of the bond that, that we developed through going to school. And then we, we ended up getting that grave sh graveyard shift job at this, uh, yeah, company and just started talking about, um, you know, cool things to do in a live show and, it was the idea of like, well, what if I like play the low notes over here and while you play the high notes, you know, and that's, that's kind of where it stemmed from. And, you know, little by little, I 
kind of convinced him to join the band and told him that he can he can bring groove to our band and he was like but your music doesn't have any groove there's too many stops there's too many hits it's too complicated (laughs) um and uh yeah so he he jumped in and he he jumped in head first and we we started kind of doing this uh you've probably heard the I forget the title of it, but it was like the Chips Ahoy theme song. That that thing. Um, basically, there were kind of like two parts going on, and I played the lows, and he played the highs, and we needed a climax. And it was like, well, Johnny had seen that, and he was like, well, what if I come and like hit it with my drumsticks? And it was it. You know, it made this like really cool percussive type of sound. It was like, oh, awesome. Okay, let's orchestrate all of this. And we did kind of a version of that for years. And, you know, through playing shows and kind of hearing how it could be cooler, like our our manager, uh, Will, was like, what if you turn it upside down so Johnny's back isn't to the audience? You can kind of face them. And so Dan got this idea to like, oh, I'm going to like spin the bass around. It's going to do this 360 or 520 or whatever it is and like walk into place. And he's telling us this and it's like, okay, sure, Dan. You know, and then lo and behold, you know, he once he shows us this contraption that he's made, um, it's like, oh, my God this is awesome. This is really dangerous. We're totally going to hurt somebody. (laughs) Fortunately, um, we, we haven't hurt anybody. I think we ended up hitting somebody's hand, um, back in like maybe 2013. Um, you know, the no barricade shows and where people are crushed up against the stage and just like waving their hands there. And for lots of times we had to tell people to get back. So we wouldn't, Know, take their head off or whatever i'm um, always spun it around but yeah that's uh that's a long-winded story into how we got the basinator um you know and i would tell you guys you know when starting a band right now or being in a band definitely think of something that can set you apart there's so many bands out there and for us it was kind of this sort of you know sort of theatric theatrics if you will when people don't know your songs, what's going to get them to come back to the show? And it's things like the bassinator. We did this corny like drum solo. I dressed up in like this pots and pans suit, and our, our old guitar player was in this trash can suit. And so it was like this stomp sort of silly hybrid thing. And it kind of became a gimmick, or it started as a gimmick, but it brought people to the shows. So then as time went on, it's like, well, how can we get out of this like gimmick thing? And we slowly incorporated it into the heart of the band and what the band is and what it stands for. Um, so, you know, you see a bass senator solo now, or you see drum solos or things that we do now. And even the scorpion tail, it's yeah. this crazy contraption, you know, that skills band started early on into, you know, building these drum stands out of wood, you know, fell apart so many times into teaching himself how to weld and how to get better. And that became a passion and a strength of his um, that, you know, he's still doing now. And I, I can't tell you what he's building, but I can tell you it's huge. And <laughs> I'm really excited and just as scared as I was when he first told me about the Basinator. So it's going to be gonna be pretty crazy um on this next album uh kind of the showpiece thing that we have um but yeah i i guess uh yeah I, I want to i guess tell you guys that you know find out what that thing that you're good at that you do and that's different from other bands and you know lean into it and yeah. develop it that was a really good idea to like build all those different things and I cannot wait to see what the next thing is going to be like <laughs> yeah if you guys if you guys ever come back here in like the Oregon area I'll go see you guys again oh awesome very cool yeah I I can't wait um we've only 
been up to Oregon a few times, unfortunately. Um, but I've always had a good time there. And I'm, I'm a big beer connoisseur, and there, there's lots of good beer out there. I shouldn't say that to y'all, but <laughs> maybe in, in, in 10 years or whatever it is, um, you should be excited. <laughs> um, so... what's it like hauling all of that uh like all those contraption things like the scorpion tail and the basinator to like each different show uh it's dangerous is what it is <laughs> it uh uh it's caused you know several in- injuries at one point i you know we just hired this new uh monitor engineer and it was his first show and he didn't know much about, you know, the basic editor and whatnot. And uh, Johnny's mic kept cutting in and out. And so he was going to, like, fix the issue at the front of the stage. And while the basic editor thing was happening, and fortunately, like, Dan saw him come out, out of the corner of his eye and stop the arm from swinging. And it, it was literally going to, like, just crush through his head. So I'm so glad Dan saw him. Um, But, yeah, we we are a a dangerous band. Um, And, yeah, I've gotten hurt plenty from the random metal things that we have, packing them into trailers, you know, in their early days. And I know lots of our crew have as well. They're not, like, square either, so (laughs) they're hard to pack into a trailer or box truck or whatever. Um, so it, it, it takes some, some skilled Tetris for sure. Uh, yeah. I got very good at that. Um, but you know, like, like anything else, you figure out those problems and, Oh, we should put this in a road case. So it's a lot easier. So, you know, then you do that, but still then it's like, man, we have so much crap <laughs> and it's expensive you know, to load all of this stuff around. At the same time, it's this crap that gets people to come out and and see an exciting show, you know, just as we've progressed our songwriting and, you know, uh, our, our, uh, our skills in that realm, we've done the same in the live show uh, realm. And yes, things are getting bigger and, and whatnot. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to need a semi now <laughs> um, to lug around all this stuff, which is a good move, you know? And it's like, come see this next thing and see these new songs. Um, and that they'll be a step up too. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a. Uh, so what what's it like loading this stuff? It's uh, expensive and uh, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So um, for your next album that you guys are working on, do you plan on keeping the same sound or changing it up a little bit? I think it's the next chapter. Uh, I think in a lot of regard, we're taking more risks. There's... Uh, think uh we, we're not caring as much as far as uh like is this in this genre or is it not you know some songs it's it's been a theme of nothing more to let's just follow the song wherever it goes we there's kind of a lot of genres within our uh our band i would say it's like we touch on this we touch on that and we love doing that because from it comes out, you know, our sound and it that we can stand out amongst the sea of other rock bands and everything. So I'd say it's almost the same answer I guess I would have given, you know, somebody asked me after the last record um, or the one before that is it's the next chapter. The, heavy, the heavier stuff is going to be even heavier. Uh, it's going to be more brutal. Um, you know, it's like, I got some eight string songs going for sure. And that are good Lord, like stuff gets pretty heavy. And then at the same time, it's like, 
Yeah, and there's there's like some cool like the weekend, the neighborhood, Lana Del Rey, um, you know, almost Joe Cocker type of cool, soulful um, jams. It's like I'm I'm pushing the guys to like let me do this ukulele thing, and, <laughs> which is pretty silly, um, but actually sounds really cool. It's an elect- electric ukulele and just piped through my axe effects and got a bunch of weird sounds on it, but that makes it awesome i think the important thing is to not limit ourselves um creatively so and having a different starting point always ends up with a different result you know if you always have a guitar and drop c and using the same distortion effect you know it's like you well you might always end up with the same thing that's not necessarily true but it's just pushing yourself to write a song from this starting point, you know, or change this. What if I mess with the tuning here and I make it like an open chord? Ooh, it sounds brighter and there's a ton more resonance and really makes it feel like, you know, there's four guitars playing instead of one or something like that. Um, so, yeah, the, the record's going to be, <laughs> I guess it sounds like it's going to be all over the place. Uh, <laughs> and and I... Yeah, there, there's some some ballads, there's some bangers, there's some uh, slow, drudgy sound garden type of things. Um, I don't know, just then the next step, just even more of nothing more. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm cheesy. Oh, uh, those. <laughs> That was a that was a pun I will never forget. <laughs> yeah. I will never forget that that is going on that is going on to music on the world funny moments that is highlights. Oh great! Yeah, yeah no, you you should forget that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's my the dad and me coming out. The the dad jokes are strong in me. You know, they're getting even stronger. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that, <laughs> that is, that'll go down history. Anyways, um, let's see. <laughs> One person in our live chat, uh, just, uh, apparently is, 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 just, crying just laughing. commented it's yeah, crying laughing the crying laughing emoji uh, yeah <laughs> oh good yeah pretty sure my overall cool points are at an all-time low <laughs> yeah but I, I don't care whatever any questions um do you want to say something uh, uh this is not a question but uh, just saying I really, uh, saying I really respect you and, uh, 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 and what you do in the music in, in the music world, and I, I feel like uh, like you should keep on like doing what you're doing. Well, hey, thanks, man. I I appreciate that, and you know, I want uh, to give you all the same. Um, I don't uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Yeah, you know if you have if you have some and. You guys have a, a great avenue already mm-hmm. to reaching out to people that have been down the road where you want to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't don't hesitate. You can reach out anytime. I'm here. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. Happy to be on. So much for being on here. Like this is really insane. This is actually just our fourth uh, interview. Yeah. Very cool. Good. Yeah, we have more though in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, of course. Of yeah. Course. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we're out of questions. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, uh, no worries. I gotta, I gotta get my son geared up in his gymnastics clothes and gotcha. go haul him off to gym practice. Hey, this is Mark Vallalunga, and you're listening to Musical Underworld.
nothing more 